Good morning and welcome to our reflection. This is Friday the 1st of September. Our time with Acts of the Apostles has come to a close and we're now back with the lectionary and in the Gospel of Mark. So our reading for today is from Mark chapter 7 beginning at verse 31. Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon, down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There some people brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged Jesus to place his hand on him. After he took him aside, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. Then he spat and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said to him, Ephratha, which means be opened. At this the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosed and he began to speak plainly. Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Jesus has been in Gentile country, Tyre and Sidon, and in what was called the Decapolis, that is the ten towns that had a sort of confederation. These days you can trace most of them in Jordan and one in Israel. Greek colonies with Greek customs and population. Jesus had just dealt with the woman in Tyre, who was from Syria, a Gentile who wanted Jesus to heal her daughter. Jesus had bantered with her, almost insolent, but this had only induced her to persist in her request, and Jesus had been so impressed with her faith and courage that she, he had healed the daughter. He also had to put up with some Pharisees and teachers of the law who objected to the way Jesus healed on the Sabbath and ate with people they didn't approve of. His argument was basically that you can obey any rule you can think of, but if in your heart it is corrupt, then all the rule following is worthless. So when Jesus meets up with this man who is death, the faith of the friends who brought him was very touching, just what Jesus needed to counterbalance all the negativity of the Pharisees. Jesus demonstrates beautiful empathy with this man. Jesus takes him aside, away from the hustle and bustle, away from people trying to attract his attention. First, Jesus demonstrates very simply what he's going to do. He touches the man's ears and tongue. He doesn't try to communicate complicated theology or insist that the man show faith or ask for any other sign of belief. Jesus simply says in sign language that he's going to heal him. The big sigh that would have been felt by the man on his face and the simple be opened would resonate. So the man was able to hear, to be able to speak. In those days of no special help for the disabled, this man would have spent his life in isolation and non-communication, with things done to him, not with his explicit consent. His friends would have been kind to him, but couldn't treat him as an equal, couldn't allow him to think for himself. And there he is, healed and able to express himself for the first time. These days, if people have special treatment for, to restore their hearing, implants and the like, they need to be taught how to speak, as well as cope with the noise of the outside world. Often their speech patterns are flat and strange. Maybe you remember the politician Jack Ashley, who was a great defender of the disability movement, who could speak but had a, a very unusual accent. What I like about how Jesus healed this man is that not only could he hear, but he could also speak fluently without sounding odd. He was not only restored, he was saved. 
we personally will be unlikely to be able to restore someone's hearing or heal them in any miraculous way, but we can ensure that they and anyone with a different disability are fully part of our society, fully parts of our lives. Because someone is different doesn't mean that we are better than them. Because they have a disadvantage doesn't mean they don't have advantages in a different way. My grandson is on the autistic spectrum, so has challenges, but he is also brilliant at all things science, which brings him great advantage. Let me finish with a prayer. Father God, help us to see all your people as individuals, just as Jesus did with this deaf man. Help us to walk alongside people who need our help, rather than taking over their lives. And help us to accept help from others who see us struggling and want to follow in your son's footsteps. Amen. Thank you for being with me. I'll see you sometime soon. I hope you have a very good weekend. God bless.